Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you a really cool trick on the TX16S on Edge TX, and it's called Dynamic Dual Rates. It's a thing I came up with some time ago based on a user request, and I've modified it slightly to work with the co-pilot. Very recently, I did a video on how to adjust weights and expo using a knob. In this configuration, there's a slight variation on that procedure. So I'll put a link in the description for the other video so you can get a look at it. And I would encourage you to take a look at that first because it might help kind of set the stage a little bit for what we're doing here. But you don't have to. I'll show you all the steps that are required to make this work. But here's the idea. When you're flying a co-pilot and you're in stabilized mode, I recommend just leaving the weight at 100% and using the elevator just like normal, like a normal plane, because the stabilizer limits the bank angle, which means you can't flip it or roll it. You can't, you can't roll it over on its belly when you're in stabilized mode. It's limited to about 30, 40 degrees of bank angle. There are several other flight computers that operate this way as well, like in angle mode on Betaflight or on INAV. Same kind of concept, right? You can roll to a point, but no further. So in those cases, you want to leave your rates just at 100% percent but if you go in manual mode and you're on a fast flyer like the goblin what happens is when you get up to speed you really don't want those rates set to be very high so the idea is that we've got the radio set up now to do what i call dynamic dual rates which means the radio will automatically adjust the rates based on your level of input power let me show you how it works the first thing we have to do is go into the model settings and we're going to create a curve. So we just go over to the curve line. In my case, I called it TRA. It's two points and it's got values of 110. Now, the reason I'm using 110, it's reversed, is because as we advance the throttle, we want the rates to come down. We want less movement on the elevator. And as we reduce the throttle, we want more movement on the elevator. So it looks a little reversed, but that's why. Again, I named mine TRA. You can name it whatever you want. So the first thing you do is create a curve. And after you create a curve, the next thing we're going to do is create an input. All right, on the input screen, let me explain my switch configuration. If you look, we're just paying attention to the elevator. I did not apply this to the aileron, although you easily could. I just did it to my elevator. So in the elevator, I've got three entries for the input. The first one is not SC middle. There's a little ex exclamation in there that says exclamation SC middle. And what that means is when the SC or my mode switch is in the up position, which is return to launch, then the, this line is activated. It also is activated when the switch is all the way down, which is stabilized mode. And so what that means is that when I'm in stabilized mode or return to launch, the top input line is used. Okay. Now in, in return to launch, it doesn't really matter because you don't have control over the elevator anyway. The computer does, but you just set it up this way. It's called what I call defensive programming. It makes sure you have no unforecasted mode. Okay. So not SC middle. That means when we're in stabilized mode or in return to launch, we have 100% throw. The magic happens when we go into this middle position. And you can see in the middle position, I have two options here, one called L01 at 55% and one GV1 with no expo. I'll cover both of those. So in the first case, the 45% line, that's a hard coded value that's real simple. What it says is when the throttle is at a certain point, that's triggered by L01. See the L01? When L01 is triggered, I want my rate just to be fixed at 45% with 55% expo. So this means when I'm at full tilt, I'm screaming, I've got the power all the way up, I've got a fixed weight of 45% and my curve set at 55. Now, you can adjust the trigger point and the curve and the weight however you want. You can adjust the expo, the weight, and when it triggers, however you want. Or you could avoid it altogether and have a completely dynamic curve. So this is why I call it dynamic dual rates because what happens is the curve adjusts up to a point. After that, the curve is fixed at a very low rate, 45% and 55 on the expo. So you can see what happens as I move my stick. This gives you a view into what happens. When the stick is all the way down, when throttle is very low, I have 100% rates. As I advance the stick, you can see how this rate is changing, right? It's changing, it's changing. I'm up at 50, 60% power now. Right when I cross this threshold, you see the expo kicks in. And I did that kind of by design to show you that this is the dynamic part where the weight is moving. And then as we hit our trigger point, that's when this weight kicks in, L01 goes active. We see a weight of 45% and the expo of 55. So right there is when it happens. And from that point on, it's fixed. So it's not continually fluctuating all the way up to 100%. Okay, so that's the input you need to make for the locked-in rate for the hard-coded 
high speed rate, 45, 55, and activated by L01. All right, now the next one we're gonna add is the actual dynamic rate. And what I wanna show you on this is when my stick moves down below that threshold that I set, you can see that that line now becomes active because L01 went off. So this line becomes active. That's now GV1 controlling our, our rate. So we'll take a look at what this looks like. It's real simple. We simply have a line for elevator. There is no activation switch. The source is elevator and the weight is GV1. I'll show you the special function in just a moment, but the weight is GV1 in this case. And also, if you wanted to add Expo in here, you could. You could also change the Expo value to be GV1 or GV2. If you look at the other video that shows you how to adjust Expo, you can do whatever, any combination you want. I left Expo out of the equation for this example. Okay, those are your input setups, and there's one other thing we need to do, and that's we need to create a throttle that's governed by our curve. This is where the curve comes in. So on the input name, I called it T-RAT, T-RATE, and that input is governed by my curve T-R-A. Remember that two-point curve that I made? That's this thing. That curve governs the upper and lower bounds of this dynamic rate, okay? That's what that curve is for. It, it create, we create an input that's governed by this curve, and that curve governs the high point and low point of this movement. We're rounding third and heading for home. We'll back out of the input screen. That's all you need to do on the input screen. Now we need to set up a quick logical switch and a special function and we'll be done. On the logical switch screen, create a logical switch. I used L01 in my case. And all I have in here for a function is A greater than X when my throttle is greater than 10. And what that means, 10, don't forget, 10 is just above the halfway point. And you can set this threshold wherever you want. If you want it to be a lot higher, you can do that. If you want it to be lower, you can do that. I use 10 because it's just about just above halfway. Once I start getting above halfway, that's when I want that locked in rate to trigger. Remember, L01 triggers the hard coded weight. So I set mine at A greater than X. It's governed by the throttle. And when that throttle moves above 10, remember the scale is negative 100 to positive 100. So neutral is zero. So you just slightly north of neutral, that's 10 and my AND switch is SC middle. And what that means is this logical switch can only go active when I'm in manual mode. It cannot go active if I'm not in manual mode. That's a, an important thing. That AND switch means a lot in this configuration. Don't forget to do it. Okay, the next step is to back out of the logical switches and we'll make a special function that simply adjusts the global variable. Just like in the Expo video, it's the same thing. We have a switch that's set to on. The function is adjust. The global variable in my case is GV1. You can use whatever global variable you want. I use GV1. The mode is mixer source and the mixer source is T rate. That's the input that we created. Remember we created that one standalone input line. This is the input that changes the global variable and that's why that curve is applied because we limit that input to only go from 100 to 10. Okay, and then you put an enable check in that box and now I'll show you what that looks like in the global variable screen. So we go over to global variable. When I move that throttle, my bottom end is 100. Do you guys remember what the top end is? It's 10, right? So as I go all the way up to here, we stop at 10. Okay, so 100 to 10, those are my boundaries. And that's how we control or constrain the movement of the global variable using a curve and an input. Okay, that's it. The configuration's complete and our model's now ready to fly. Let's take a look at the inputs just one more time so you can see what it looks like. So I'll go down to elevator and I'm gonna click on my locked in mode. It doesn't matter because it's going to switch. Okay, with my throttle all the way down, that means I should have 100% on my rates. If I move my elevator down, you can see the ball goes all the way down to negative 100. And if I push all the way up, it goes up to positive 100. Now, as I start to advance my throttle, watch what happens to this ball. It's gonna come down. You see how it's coming down? It's 80, 70, there's 60, and then we jump when we hit 10 on the throttle, and that jumps over to the static hard-coded value that you see on this screen, which is 45% and 55%. And there you go, now we've got some expo. Our elevator is a little bit limited, so we're not you know, doing hard pitches while we're moving very fast, and you don't have to even touch a switch. I'll tell you what, I really like this configuration for fast movers, because when you're flying fast, the last thing you wanna do is fumble around looking for a switch. So it's really nice just to have the radio kind of tone those elevator throws down for you just a little bit. And don't forget, you could apply it to your ailerons as well if you want to do that. Cool radio, isn't it? Neat tricks in this thing. All right, that's all I've got for today. I hope you liked the video. And if you do, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.